really interesting. Scott, look, I know you've just closed your latest case, but I need your help. We just discovered a dead body in Central Park, and I think you'll want to come take a look. A hell of a sight to behold, isn't it? This pile of leaves prevents us from properly identifying the body, so I think your best shot is to come and inspect the crime scene in person. Sandra Parsons, at your service. <laughs> well, hello. I've already done the initial examination, but I've left everything in its place, so you can examine everything on your own. You should examine the body first, so we can take it back to the lab and do an autopsy, and then we'll start looking at the other evidence. Detective Matthews has already begun interviewing the witnesses who found the body. Hello, I'm Daniel Smith. Just how many people are going to interrogate me? Otto and I were colleagues and good friends, so I knew him really well. I still can't believe he's gone. Otto and I loved going for morning runs in the park. Today we were supposed to go too. But I smelled something fishy when Otto didn't show up at our usual meeting time this morning. No way! Otto was a decent and hard-working man. He wouldn't hurt a fly! His directness annoyed some of his colleagues, but he always had good intentions and did his job to the best of his ability. It breaks my heart to see my friend like this. If it's alright with you, officer, I'd like to go home and grieve in peace. I hope I've managed to help you a little bit. Good luck with your investigation. Take these. You'll need them later.
The bruises around the victim's neck indicate strangulation. We conclude that the murder occurred yesterday at around 5 p.m. The crime weapon seemed to be a thin, durable object. I assume you've already examined the body. If so, you can take it to the coroner's office. Once they complete the post-mortem report, you'll receive it via email. The victim was in the park around 5 p.m. on the day of the murder. He was wearing athletic shoes and a tracksuit. He was jogging. The killer was waiting for him, clearly knowing that the victim always jogs the same route. The killer stayed in the camera's blind spot and waited until the victim reached him. Then, he suddenly attacked the victim from behind and strangled him with a shoelace. Still taking your time, eh? While you've been dawdling, I've already determined the victim's identity. It's Otto Hudson, a 36-year-old architect, single. His colleague and close friend, Daniel, discovered his body during his usual morning run. What's your take on this? What's our next step? I have to admit, that does make sense. Let's get to work then. How about I inspect Otto's apartment while you pay a visit to his workplace? Then we'll meet and go over what we found. Two ace detectives are better than one, right? I'll catch up with you later. For now, take this. I'm sure you'll make good use of it. You have no right to decide for the whole Bureau. The deed is already done, which means we have to deal with the consequences. Hello, who are you? Oh, a detective. Something really terrible must have happened then. I'm the director of the Architectural Bureau, and Laura is one of the staff. So, what's a detective doing here on a day off? I saw him just yesterday at work. 
We were working together on a new project. Odo had a very bad temper, which sometimes caused him problems at work. But I can't believe anyone would kill him. He was such a troublemaker, and not very competent either. Look, search the Bureau if it's necessary for your investigation, but I have to run to a meeting. Laura will find the keys to the office for you, and take a look at the computer in there. I imagine there's some camera footage on it you might find useful. Understand that this is your job and every detail matters, so I should probably tell you. I was just about to quit this job because it wasn't really working out, but before I could pick up my things, I ran into the director. Here, take this. The room is on the top floor. You can use the elevator to get there faster. <sighs> I hope you'll find the one who did this to him.
I found another witness. There's a guy in the interrogation room who was in the park when everything happened, so he most likely saw the killer. You should talk to him. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything in Otto's apartment that would help the investigation. All right. Maybe we'll solve this case after all. Hi, my name's Mark Coleman. Nice to meet you. So, what do you want to know? I was just walking in the park like I always do. I wasn't paying much attention, but I crossed paths with a man who was hiding his face with a hood, so I couldn't get a good look at him. No, never even heard of him. I know the man next to Otto. That's Daniel, one of my psychotherapy patients. Daniel's a good man, but he has had some difficulties at work lately. Great job. You should hurry up and get to him before he leaves. I'll go with you. You know, we make a pretty good team.
We can still catch Daniel before he leaves, but we don't have much time. If we can get to his apartment before he does, maybe we can ambush him. It would be better to enter through the backyard so we don't draw any undue attention. I'll keep a lookout while you sneak inside. I'll give you a sign if Daniel comes back. You'll need them later.
looks like hell. Daniel escaped down the street. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Go catch that psycho! than a year on this massive architectural project. I was so proud of my work. By the time it was done, it was almost perfect. And then guess what Otto did? He stole it and claimed my idea as his own. Oh, you should have seen all the awards Otto received after that. But he didn't deserve any of that admiration. He wasn't the one who came up with the idea in the first place. That project could have made my career really sore, but Otto deprived me of that. That lazy parasite didn't do a thing in his lifetime. All he knew was how to rip off others' ideas and use them to his own advantage. So, yeah. I got sick of Otto's brazen behavior and put an end to his pathetic little life. And you know what? I have no regrets. Now justice has finally prevailed, thanks to my modest contribution. Let's start with a basic question, shall we? How are you feeling today? Glad to hear it. You're making good progress. It's a shame that Daniel's grudge against Otto led him off the straight and narrow. He was a talented guy, and I think he could have gone far if he hadn't done what he did. Do you blame him for what happened? I thought you'd say that. <laughs> You're a born detective. Okay, let's move on to some more advanced questions. A criminal is hiding from the police in one of these houses. If you were trying to arrest him, and you knew he would be long gone before your backup arrived, which house would you check first? Well done! Criminals are always looking for an escape route and you stopped him from jumping into that car and driving off. So here's an important lesson to learn. Successful detectives never overlook minor details. You'd be amazed what can crack a case. All right, here comes another test of your intuition. Which of these two men is planning to assault you? See, appearances can be deceptive. Some of the most successful serial killers in history got away with their behavior for so long because they could fool everyone around them into thinking they were nice guys. Hey, buddy, drop whatever you're doing and head to the museum. The director over there was found dead in his office. I'm on my way too, so I'll meet you there. If you make it to the museum before me, don't wait up for me to get there. Just start questioning the witnesses. And don't forget to record the interviews so we can go through them later. See you. Leaving already? Hang on, you forgot your bag. Here, I'm sure you'll need your detective equipment. Much better this way. Like I said, you're a born detective. I know the type. As soon as you get a new case, you get so obsessed you forget to take care of yourself. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna hold you back. Good luck and stay alert. Nice to meet you, Detective. 
My name is Derek McKayley. I'm the executive assistant to the director of this museum. I mean, I was his assistant. The other police sealed off his office, so we've all just been sitting here waiting for someone to interview us. I was attending an art class when I got a message from the director. He needed to discuss something with me right away, so I got in my car and rushed here as fast as I could. I even broke the speed limit. But it was all in vain. Grace, an art conservator. Maybe you've read about me in the papers. My name has already made it into the history books. I take care of all the relics on display with my trusty tools. I make sure to attend every exhibition, and today's was no exception. This whole time, I was at my desk keeping an eye on the visitors to our museum. I didn't abandon my post once. Today, we didn't have as many guests as usual, but I was on continuous duty all the same. I have no idea how the murderer managed to sneak past me. Things keep going from bad to worse. I have no idea what could have triggered the alarm, but I have to disable it. Could you help me? You'll find the alarm button on the security guard's desk. Just use this key. While you're working on the alarm, Henry, our security guard, will turn the lights back on. Finally. I got to the museum as fast as I could, but then BOOM! The alarm went off and all the doors locked. At least you made it here before me. Why on earth was the electricity cut off? I hate to interrupt you, but I overheard a bit of your conversation. I think this power outage is just from our old electrical equipment. Our security guard can usually handle little things like that, but he's not really able to fulfill his duties at the moment. Sounds like a plan. Why don't you let me help? 
I can look for the source of the power cut and send you what I find. Something's fishy about this guy. He seems a bit too eager to help us, don't you think? How about we try a little good cop, bad cop on him? Since you made it to the museum before me, you should do the honors and determine the cause of death. All the equipment is in my car, so you'll be able to carry out a forensic analysis on the victim's body right here. I'll be waiting near my car. only affects people with heart diseases. Malcolm Green's had heart problems, but only his inner circle knew about it. Looks like the murderer was on close terms with the victim. And how do you know about it, I wonder? Maybe we should arrest you. You seem to know too much about the victim. Finally, a voice of reason. Thank you for sticking up for me. And it's no wonder I knew Mr. Greens well. I was his executive assistant, after all. True. All right, Derek, you're free to go. From now on, we should be paying extra attention to anyone who could have known about Green's heart problems.
I see you managed to open the safe. I'm afraid I must ask you to hand over those documents. Now. That's it. I have to admit, you're good at your work, Detective. But do yourself a favor. Find your suspect and go home. Stop poking your nose where it doesn't belong. What the hell happened here? So it was McKaylee after all? Which way did he go? Okay, you try to save those documents, I'll run after him. Got away. But we'll track him down later. Did you manage to salvage anything from that folder? Nicely done. It looks like you saved it just in time. Let's see what we have here. It looks pretty badly damaged. But maybe we can restore it somehow back at the lab. We have some new information. It 
Turns out McKaylee had a run-in with Green shortly before he was murdered. Could be that's our motive right there. And that's not all. The evidence we found suggests the two of them were illegally selling museum relics through a clandestine auction house. And guess what? They were planning to auction off that medieval helmet today. That can only mean that the helmet we saw on display in the museum was actually a counterfeit. And if that auction is happening today, maybe that's where we'll find McKaylee. I bet he'll want to finish what he started. How about we throw him a surprise party? I'm sorry, but today we're hosting a private event. You can enter by invitation only. I don't think you're mentioned in our guest list, so please come back another day. seeing you here, detective. You think the murderer is lurking somewhere here in this auction house? Well, if that's the case, let me help you. Everyone at these auction houses knows me because I've worked on tons of art pieces for all of them. If you follow me, I can help you blend in with the crowd in the auction hall. I will finish what I started, and no one is going to thwart my plans, including you, detective. I know you're just doing your job, but I can't afford to let you get in my way. You're not as smart as you think you are, Detective. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Since you apparently can't be trusted to do it, I guess it's up to me to bring the real perpetrator to justice. I'm not going to warn you again. Stay out of it. Ironically, you must have come here to arrest me. I understand, but first, let me explain. By now, you've probably figured out that Mr. Greens used to auction off museum relics on the black market. I never went to the auctions myself, but since I was his assistant, I helped him prepare the documents he needed to organize the bidding process. 
When I realized you discovered that folder from Mr. Green's safe, I knew it was just a matter of time before we got exposed. So I burnt those documents to destroy as much of the evidence as I could. But I had nothing to do with Mr. Green's murder. I would never want to see him get hurt. He was like a father to me, in many ways. I'm still kind of in denial. I know you probably won't believe me. But I actually came here to get copies of the receipts for all those transactions, so I could hand them over to the police. With Mr. Green's being gone, I think it's time to put his corrupt business to an end, too. Thanks. If you put in a good word for me, I'll, um, I'll do whatever I can to help. In fact, I think I might have a suspect. When I first got here, I ran into Grace. I know exactly what she's planning to do. She wants to expose our illegal transactions. She's gotten so obsessive about art that she'd probably go crazy if she knew we were auctioning off museum relics and replacing them with counterfeits. I should have seen it coming. When Grace attended the exhibition in our museum, her expertise helped her realize the helmet on display wasn't authentic. She'd cracked our scheme open even before you did. I don't want to do any guesswork, but what if Grace is the murderer? I bet she's looking for that helmet right now. If she finds it, she'll be able to prove that the one in the exhibition is a counterfeit, and our museum's reputation will be destroyed for good. We need to find that helmet first. What we did was wrong. I don't deny it. But the museum deserves better. Here's my invitation to the auction. If you show it to the security guard, he'll assume you're with me and let you in. The relic has to be inside somewhere. My guess is that Grace is also looking for the helmet's certificates of authenticity. If she finds those, she'll be able to use them as proof that we've been displaying counterfeits this whole time. Without those documents, all her accusations are but empty talk. We should find those certificates before Grace does, or our museum is done for. I know it's a lot to ask, but I don't think I'll be able to stop her without your help. Would you take this risk? I never approved of what Mr. Greens was doing, but I helped him all the same. I know it won't make up for what I did, but I want to put an end to our illegal scheming.
Long time no see, detective. I was hoping you'd stay in that hatch and mind your own business. You think you're about to solve this case? Did you even know the man you're helping is a criminal? You thought no one would find out about your scam, Mr. McKaylee? You don't deserve to walk this earth after everything you've done. And now that I'm about to expose your foul fraud, you're going to put on a repentant face? Spare me. Once a con man, always a con man. You'll just lie low for a while and then go back to your old illegal ways. I'm here to put an end to your impunity. And if your detective friend interferes, then you can both join Mr. Green's. So it was you. You're calling me a criminal when you're the one pointing a gun at us. And what does the detective have to do with my scam? Fine, Mr. McKaylee, I'll deal with you first. But don't think I'll let you live, not after what you did. All those priceless works of art you shamelessly sold to the highest bidder were created to delight the eye of the beholders, not to line your pockets. I suggest you leave us alone now, detective. Last warning. Go write in your report that the trail went cold or something. If you try to expose me, I'll get you next. Now then, Mr. McKaylee, why don't you show me where you keep all the auction papers?
So this is what you call justice, detective? You're really going to blame it all on me and let McKaylee get away with his vile deeds? Here I thought you had some principles. Well, if that's the case, so be it. I actually accept the consequences of my actions, unlike the rest of you. I know I did what had to be done. Malcolm Greens got what he deserved. Thank you. If it weren't for you, I'd be dead. I just wish Mr. Greens and I had never got involved in any of this. And he'd still be alive. What's done is done, though. So I'm ready to face the penalty, too. Uh, get down! Congratulations, buddy. We solved the case, thanks to you. I have to admit, you might be even better at this than I am. I know violent crime has been on the rise lately, but I think between the two of us, maybe the city will have a fighting chance. You can count yourself lucky. Grace took a shot at you, but she missed the target. Both she and Derek are in custody now. It looks like justice will prevail after all, thanks to you. It's been five years since that terrible accident, but the families of those buried under thick layers of concrete and metal still remember that day as if it were yesterday. Hello, Detective. Great to see you. How have you been? I've read about the most recent case you solved in the newspaper. Nice job. You're a role model for every detective, a person as responsible as one can be. So, what did you think about the counterfeits case? Tell me, what's worse, deceiving thousands of people or killing in the name of justice? Hmm. Interesting choice. Talking and getting to know you is a genuine pleasure. You're like a book with lots of plot twists. Never know what'll be on the next page. I understand that risk is an integral part of your job. But please, be careful. Safety first. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Duty calls, right? Nice seeing you, detective. Till next week. Hopefully. Evening, Detective. Good to see you. Oh, some woman was asking for you? She's been waiting in the interview room for hours. I bet she's a real fan of yours. The woman told me about what happened in broad strokes. A strange case involving a lot of mysterious threats. That's all I can say about it. But you will solve it, I have no doubt. Welp, I'd better go. Have an important assignment from our boss. See ya. You're finally here. Vivian Mills, crime reporter at the Daily Event. Nice to meet you. I'm here on a very important matter. I got a weird letter today. That little piece of paper made me so scared that I rushed to the police the minute I'd finished reading it. I have no idea who could have sent this letter. Never thought anyone could hold such a grudge against me. Please, take a look at the letter. I believe there is a way you can find out where it was sent from, at least to some extent. Here's the letter.
looks like we have a clue that will lead us to the one who sent this letter. There's no time to waste. Grab your stuff and let's go to the bar. What? <laughs> That's strange. Is there a mistake? Let's check the dates. This jazz player is doing a concert tonight. Let's show this poster to the owner of the bar. He'll probably let us in. I... Uh, I feel so unsafe here. It's like danger is lurking behind every corner. <gasps> oh my. Someone is watching us. Why? <sighs> Why did I go to the police? I shouldn't have... <sighs> Thanks for your support, Detective. I'll try to calm down. Hi, I'm Earl, the bartender. Sorry I kept you out earlier. I sort of had to because of this weird man who's been over in that corner for a while. He's just sitting, mumbling to himself, and he doesn't seem to be leaving anytime soon, I'm afraid. Letter? He did mention some letters several times. I was trying to ask him what's wrong, but he just smashed his glass instead of answering me. That's odd, isn't it? I was afraid he would hurt someone who dropped by the bar, or just attack a random passerby. So I closed the doors to keep him inside and called the police. Maybe he'll talk to you. If you could, please try to find out why he's here and what he wants.
wasn't always such a mess. A boozer who asked strangers to buy him another month. I used to run a mill that provided steel for many factories. Our product got a lot of... A Five years ago, my life turned upside down. That accident. A big bang followed by a... Wounded people everywhere. My was a ruin. A vast pile of... I'd lost everything. Guilt consumed me. I feel it all the time. I still can't accept the loss of my mill. There was no money for a proper repair job, so I had to close it, leaving many people with no... I just wanted to grab it at the out... Wait a second. I saw an odd gr on the bar wall. The artist's figure seemed familiar to me. Surely they were some teens. A letter came to my mailbox yesterday, from an anonymous sender, with exactly the same sign on it. I was afraid it might be the work of my former rival. So I found this bar and settled down here for a... for I don't know how long. It's the only place I feel safe, and I'm not leaving anytime soon. Hasn't it occurred to you how much you're upsetting the owner of this bar? Oh, that is so rude of you, miss. If you're not familiar with manners, maybe you shouldn't barge into other people's conversations. Thank you for standing up for me, Detective. Sorry, that was out of line. I'm a little on edge lately. I can't stand people breaking things or making noise. Those youngsters just kept turning the volume of that jukebox up and up. I lost my temper and broke the darn volume button. I probably shouldn't have, but... Thanks for listening. I needed to get it out. Here, take this volume button. I hope the jukebox can be fixed.
Oh my! Where... where did you get it from? Hmm, it was in the alley behind the bar. Thank you so much. I lost it not so long ago and was going to get a new one. Now I don't have to. Okay, enough with this lost ID nonsense. It was in a bag with spray paints. You're the author of that graffiti, aren't you? I didn't want to do you any harm, but you just kept on asking for trouble. Now you know too much to stay alive. Hands up, now! No funny business! You too, pretty one. Rise and shine, sleepyheads. This is your burial chamber, so to speak. You're not getting out of here, so don't even try. Oh, thank you. Never trust a bartender, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? Wait, I recognize this place. It's been ages since the last time I was here. We're at the steel mill I used to head up five years ago. This is the only part that survived that horrible explosion. Looks like nothing has changed here. Everything is the way it was just after the explosion. Oh, I didn't have the nerve to come here and face it all. There are stairs leading from the boiler room right up to my former office. The key to it is always here with me, but I... I'm afraid to go there. Something broke inside of me the day of the accident, and I'd rather not sink into that cesspool of bad memories again. You can have a look if you want to, but I doubt there'll be anything useful. So, what do you think? That Earl is a lunatic of a man. But you have a point. There may be something that will help us understand his motive. Just a minute. I'll open the door to the office for you.
I'm glad you're alive. That bastard Earl knocked me out and brought me here. But we'll outwit him. Once he shows up, I'll try to keep him off your back so you have a chance to escape. Thank you. I appreciate your concern, Detective, but it's my fault you're here in the first place, so I'm going to be the one who helps get you out. I'll waylay Earl and attack him the moment he shows up. He'll be too busy to chase you, so you'll have a solid chance to get away. I'm a bit offended that you thought I could be so stupid as to let you get away. Miss Vivian. Detective. You're both aware of the accident that happened here five years ago, aren't you? They called it a mishap caused by the gross negligence of some of the workers. Utter rubbish! The owner's greed and venality are the reason people died. Right, Kyle Barlow? Today... We honor those poor workers who died, exactly five years ago, with another explosion. It will take the lives of the ones who had something to do with the accident. Justice will finally be served! He doesn't seem to be joking around. Yes, I did write an article on the steel mill accident five years ago. My boss needed that article ASAP, so I didn't have time to get to the bottom of the case. We must figure out if Kyle Barlow is really responsible for the explosion once we get out. But right now we need some help. Ugh, great. No cell service here. You think you could find another way to contact the police?
Attention all units. We haven't found them yet, but we don't give up. Comb all the places they might be. I got a signal. It's coming from the abandoned steel mill. That could be the detective. Dispatch your car to the following coordinates. Right now! Oh, we'll grow old and die by the time they'll come. We can't just sit here and do nothing. I'll deal with that thing myself. Get your hands off the bomb. You'll make things worse. <laughs> Seriously, Kyle? You think that's how people defuse bombs? You're hilarious. Why are you doing this? You're going to die in the explosion, too. Is that your ultimate goal, Earl? I have nothing to lose. But I'll get justice for those who died here. Find something to tie his hands with! Hurry! No, you won't get away with what you've done. And I won't die here. Fool! You can't defuse the bomb! Don't waste the last minutes of your pathetic life!
We got him! You did a brilliant job with that bomb defusing, buddy. I regret nothing. Everybody will know about that accident. The mill owner will get what he deserves. I did the right thing! I couldn't have done it without you, detective. So thank you. You helped draw the attention I needed. Originally, I was simply going to avenge the Bureau, so, you know. He's right. That accident will be all over the media. We'll find the one who neglected the investigation of this case five years ago. Kyle will face trial, too. Now let's go. You're an outstanding detective. I'm impressed. I'll write an article about that accident on the mill so people know the truth. And thank you for saving me. Meet me for a coffee sometime, detective? I'm planning to write a profile on you, and I could use some first-hand information. <laughs>